All right, welcome to the very first 50 pages a day War and Peace edition uh, video. We are going to be going over the very first 50 pages of uh, Count Leo Tolstoy's War and Peace. And it's not just me doing this. I, I didn't want to do this without a real Russian. And I know the best real Russian in the world. So everybody, please welcome Dmitry Portnoy to the first episode of War and Peace. We are so happy to have you here, Dmitry. Bonjour, monsieur, et dobry den, gospodin. Uh, I'm you... greeting you in the French and Russian languages of War and Peace. You are you are a real you are an actual Russian. Is that correct? A uh, kind of. I'm a Russian speaker born in Kiev, so uh, close enough. Do you have a Do you have much experience with uh, 19th century Russian literature? A little bit. I've read some Dostoevsky. I've read some Gogol, of course. I've I've seen a bunch of Chekhov plays, uh, but I have not read War and Peace. Wow. And uh, I'm happy to have that opportunity to an, catch up. An American on his third reading of War and Peace, and a Russian on his first. This is uh, this is historic. I think. I think that we can shake hands. Soon enough, not immediately, no. but as a sign of this historic event. Well, Dimitri is a very good friend of mine, one of the smartest people I know, and I instantly wanted to discuss this with him. He reads probably 150 pages a day and has been doing it as long as I've known him. He literally walks the streets with a Kindle in his hand, and I fear that he will get run over by a car every day because he, he doesn't even bother to look up as he's reading. So this is a man who Before 50 pages you... a day is nothing, nothing. Before you gave me my first Kindle as a gift, yes. um, I used to walk around with hardcover books well, and that, read them. Yeah, I've saved you money and, and maybe your life. We don't know. <laughs> but let's sure. talk Let's talk about War and Peace. We both read the first 50 pages. You, for the first time, give me your overall feelings of it. I know you read the introduction as well. That's that's uh, That was not mandatory. That was not homework. That was just a bonus. Well... It's a very interesting and important fact. Uh, Tolstoy wrote the novel when he was 35, uh, between the ages of 35 and 40. Uh, and you always see him with a white beard. You always see him in photographs at the end of his life. Uh, this is a young man's book. It is not an old man's book. Uh, and uh, the first proof of that is that it's very funny. It is. I've laughed I'm out loud. I'm Go glad, ahead. It is. I'm glad you brought that up. That to me, every time I read this book or anytime I read any Tolstoy, it's the first thing that I, I remember that I've almost forgotten, which is that he is truly funny. And he's like a he's like a yapping yenta. He's just all, this little gossipy, nebbishy guy pointing out everybody's weaknesses. And it, it, he does this incredible magic trick of it reminds me almost of like Gaspar Noe's camera work, how he you're flying around the room and then you're landing inside somebody's thoughts and then you're spinning over to the other side of the room to catch a snippet of conversation and then the camera's moving over here. And he does all this before cinema was even invented by 100 years. So it's but it, it, it's the most cinematic narrative that I've ever read. I was I, I was it's giving you very a, a, a cinematic. In there. fact, most of this. <laughs> Go yes, ahead, go ahead. Uh, uh, you froze for a moment, but uh, it's very cinematic. Most of the scenes are like two pages long. Uh, they're all there's a lot of dialogue. Uh, the dialogue is very funny uh, and often very direct uh, and very movie like. Uh, so, uh, I, I think movies learned how to do dialogue in part from uh, this novel. Uh, this novel is very influential. Uh, but just because it's influential and just because there's so many things about it that seem familiar, uh, it doesn't make it any less weird. Uh, totally. It's really weird. It's very peculiar. It's very, very, very specific. The thing about describing slips, I think, first 50 pages that I've read in all of literature. Uh, women with a tiny mustache who reveal a little bit of their front teeth. Men with overlaps that seem like two smiles stitched together. He is, um, he is obsessed, he is obsessed with her upper lip, I think. 
The amount of the amount of times he brings up her upper lip in, 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 in five pages is amazing. He uh, well, it's, it's uh, amazing. like like oh yeah, that's the one with that the upper lip. Yes, I always uh, think it, of, it, it's, of uh, go ahead. Uh, uh, it's peculiar and it's also very real uh, because uh, he made up all these people. He's mm. obviously never seen photographs of anyone, uh, but the introduction says that he walked around St. Petersburg and walked around Moscow and looked at people um, looking for characters for the book and for specific looks for the book. So they feel very real. Yeah. So, and some of them are based on family members of his and, and uh, so one of them is even sort of based on himself. Uh, and we'll get into that character. So, so what's amazing to me about these first 50 pages is as someone who's read this uh, multiple times, he introduces 95% of the major characters in the first 50 pages. And he introduces them very briefly and very well. It really feels like a pilot of a television show. I think a lot of modern television owes a lot to, to the narrative that was invented by Tolstoy and the way he tells stories. Um, it feels like succession, actually. 100%. Because it- you know, it begins with a lot of people being introduced in a row, and then it starts following a character, and then it abandons him and, and follows other characters. So um, I'm, I'm pulling and, up and, my Kindle here, I, or I'm trying to at least. Oh, what happened to my Kindle? Um, I'm going to try to bring up my Kindle so we can all look at my Kindle together. And is that going to work? Oh, I have to do this maybe. There we go. My Kindle's there. Um, I have a list of all of the... Uh, characters here let's just talk a little bit about some of these people so people that we've met so far um we have met uh of our principal characters uh, most importantly we will we've introduced to the to the to our main families right the bolkonskis and the rostovs a little bit of the bezikovs um and we we've, we've opened on a, an, an unimportant character uh the uh Anna, I yeah yeah, Anna, who who is throwing a fete or a, a small party, not quite a ball, uh, and they're basically they a basically supper. a supper. Sure, get they basically spend the first twenty five pages focused on a character uh, not in the book, uh, and and the star of the first twenty five pages is Napoleon, and all they are focused on is uh, what this. French monster is going to do to their lives and how he's going to disrupt their lives. Um, yeah, Anna Pavlovna. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we're introduced into uh, troubling times. We, we can tell that much like the coronavirus of today, there is nothing else on anybody's lips but, but uh, uh, Napoleon and how it's going to affect their lives. And it's all anybody can talk about. And everything else that's going on in their lives is talked about through the lens of Napoleon. Uh, marriages and anxieties of what's going to happen to their children, who's going off to war, who's going to get appointed with which generals, or who's going to get the the crappy army jobs and the good ones, who's going to get married off before it's too late, hopefully marry someone quickly, maybe they'll die, you'll get their money. It's a lot of... Yeah, uh, there's uh, an older woman who's desperate to get a, a, a good commission for her son. Yes, poor beloved Boris. Beloved Boris. Yeah, beloved yes, Boris. Yes, um, And we also meet, of course, we meet Pierre. Uh, who, and uh, Matt, do you remember what the first thing Tolstoy tells you about his central character and possibly older ego and keeps repeating over and over again? That he's fat? That he's fat. This <laughs> book is very direct. Yeah. Again, it, it doesn't hide things. It, it doesn't like have a 500 word description of a character that alludes to the fact that he might be overweight. He just says, no, Pierre yeah. is fat. This is uh, this is Ricky Gervais levels of self-deprecation. Uh, this is it's, this is Tolstoy's alter ego. And he's quickly. He introduces you almost as he introduces himself almost as the bumbling fool. Uh, in a lot of ways, think of him like a like a 
like a Bernie supporter showing up at a party and everybody's trying to have, you know, there's a bunch of Biden supporters there and he won't stop yeah, rattling and Bernie on. Yeah, Bernie is Napoleon in this case. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and he, he st- loves Napoleon. <laughs> Everybody's trying to have, you know, some some pretty normal, uh, polite conversation. And he keeps rattling off about, you know, the pointlessness of war and, uh, you know, these uh, these capitalist pigs who, who want so much to be a part of the war and see how, you know, and that's all they can think about. And uh, he is a fascinating character and he will go through um, a lot of changes throughout the story. Um, it reminds my- me a little bit of Ignatius Riley. From the sure. Confederacy of, of Dunces. I, there's uh, definitely I, I that's how I feel at the beginning. Yes. yes, and he he will go through a lot of changes. He starts out as this, you know, idyllic, uh, young. He, he he is youth. He is he is just full of ideas and no experience. Uh, and he is going to have have a lot of experience in our story. Um, let's see. And he's who also else? an immigrant. He left he Russia right. at ten and has just come back at 20, having spent most of his adolescence and having been educated abroad. So he's a foreigner, he's a stranger in this land, um, and he doesn't quite know the customs, and he doesn't quite know whom to be deferential to, whom to disregard, and he doesn't edit himself the way that other members of the gentry do. And he's also a bastard. Yeah. Uh, he is. He has. He is. He is, He has no patronomic, which is the uh, the Russian form of taking on your father's uh, first name as your last, and he has no patronomic. Uh, we open on Anna and her fet, and we, we these are pretty much the adults. These are these are the grown ups. This is their concerns, their world, and then we quickly we're we're we're, ta- we're told about Anatole. Prince Vasily is quite worried about one of his sons. He has a he has a beautiful daughter and an uh, an elder son who's doing great and married. And then Anatole is in trouble, and all he wants to do is marry him off quickly before he embarrasses himself and makes himself unmarriable. Uh, and in your head, you're reading this and going like, "How bad could he really be?" And then we cut to his scene, and he has a bear on the leash. And he's trying to murder his friends by getting them to drink so much they fall out the window. I mean, it's like we're walking Literally in. Literally the... fall out the window. Yeah, we, we walk in. Taking bets on whether they'll fall out the window or not. This is like a, a cross between the Lower East Side heroin dens of the 90s and an animal, house. An animal party f- fraternity house. That's exactly right. I mean, these, these are degenerates. They're rich, frat boy jerks uh who There's are you know english sailor who's taking yep. bets they're just drinking Nate and Stevens. talking about women uh and then from there we move to the uh to the country and the rostovs and uh and we meet the children we meet 13 year olds and we go into the sweet and silly and kissing and running world of 13 year old children uh, kissing cousins literally um, and everyone's a little worried about that. Uh, kind of like the the, fir- the pilot of Game of Thrones. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, it's true. We when move into the different the adults realms. And you have mm-hmm. the children, and you have the almost incest. Yep, <laughs> that's true. Um, so, yeah, we've met our main characters. You know, we're really going to be following these two families uh, throughout the next 24 days. Um you know, it, it's just really about just being a fly on the wall right now. There's not a lot of plot. It's just a lot of getting to know these people, being used to being around them. Don't worry if you're not remembering everybody's names. It, you, you should treat this like you're at the party. And if somebody's interesting enough for you to remember them, you will. And if they're not interesting enough for you to remember them, you probably weren't meant to remember them. Um, they're the second any character, like Anna Pavlovna. Yeah, exactly. And we open on her and she's great, but she is, you know, she's she's just the lady who throws the party. Uh, So we are going to continue on our next 50 pages. Um, We will be back, uh, you know, the next day or two with our next summary of that. Um, And I'm thrilled. We'll try to keep these videos short and to the point and fun. Um, But that's it. Welcome to the exciting world. Like the book, except in one respect. Yeah, not so short. Welcome to the exciting world of war and peace. Uh, your next 50 pages are going to be filled with some, uh, some excitement. We're going to be heading off to war soon. Uh, we'll be getting the first half of the name of the book. 
And um, you are all in for quite a treat because uh, this is the greatest literary experience I've ever had. And I hope you have something close to that. Um, so thank you Beth, and Dimitri, for inviting th us on this journey. Well, thank you for being here and uh, we'll all be back very soon. Enjoy your next 50 pages. Bye.